Welcome to another edition of the CDG BizCast. I am your host, Christian Gonzalez, co-owner of Creativity Design Group, a digital marketing firm in Houston, Texas. Today we are discussing simply what makes a website interesting in the eye of a general consumer, with a main focus on text content. Justin Rail joins us today to discuss as a consumer what keeps him on a website when pulling it up for the first time. Also joining us today for the first time on CDG BizCast is our special guest, content writer Sarah Lara of eContent Suite. She'll be providing us with her professional input on what makes a website powerful when it comes to its written content. There are a lot of websites out there on the internet, but when you're having your own website built, you're going to want to make sure that your content is unique. You don't want to be another face in the crowd. You don't want to look just like everybody else using cliche content or overused phrases. You've got to show what makes your website different from everybody else's. And that also applies for your business in general. In business, you have a unique selling point. On your website, you focus on your unique selling point, of course. But in addition to that, what are you offering to the public that truly separates you from everybody else that compels them? to choose your company and its website over everybody else's so welcome to the show guys I'm glad to have you all on Justin I'm gonna start with you the first question I have for you is what draws you into a website when you're looking one up when you're on Google doing a search or or it could be another search engine maybe you're looking up your website somewhere else in general when you're trying to look up a website for a certain purpose what draws you into that website what do you see that causes you to want to click on it and check it out high reviews in the google or other search engines such as bing or duckduckgo whoever i'm using to look up websites yes i agree with you justin those are all very important things to consider when looking for a website to browse however when you're scrolling through your search results, what do you look for specifically when you're going through the results in terms of keywords or phrases or how they present themselves in the search results? If the website appears to be unrelated to the search that I'm doing, I'm going to assume that they hashtagged it just because they could, which will automatically make me wonder if that particular website's a scam because even though the search engines are not perfect, they typically do a pretty good job of keeping things organized. And that can be key is because a poorly organized website is going to want to make me click off of it and go elsewhere almost immediately. Because if your website's not properly organized and properly encrypted, I'm not going to want to spend much of any time there at all. Yes, having a nice presentation of content where everything is organized is important. And security, again, is very important. I can't stress enough the importance of having a secure website with the proper encryption, which is known as having an SSL certificate. Websites in general have a lot to offer. How they 
present themselves is going to make or break the deal when it comes to whether or not you're going to open it or not. You have three seconds to make a powerful first impression. So when you open that website, whatever you see within those three seconds upon loading is going to determine whether or not you're going to want to stay. And that also includes if you see nothing during those three seconds. Talking about if a website is very slow and you're just watching it load forever, you're going to click off. You're going to click the back button and you'll just go somewhere else. So those three seconds do count as well. Whatever you see within those three seconds is going to determine whether or not you're going to stay and check it out or not. Exactly. And especially you do not want to have autoplay content and then on your website unless it's absolutely necessary. That's one of my pet peeves on a lot of websites is they'll embed autoplay content unless I'm looking for autoplay content, I don't want to see that on a website. Yes, and we did an entire episode on website pet peeves just previously before this one, and I remember you were telling me a lot about that. I hate autoplay content myself. In addition to what we've already discussed, what else do you look for in general in terms of picking a website? What else do you look for on search results or on the homepage that draws you in when you pull up a website? For example, if I'm doing a search for something I'm interested in potentially buying, I'm going to want high quality information that keeps the industry jargon to a minimum unless I'm going to a website specifically to look up the industry jargon associated with whatever it is I'm trying to buy if I'm researching something to make a purchase. Would you please define industry jargon? What, what do you mean by that? Shorthand code, like uh, each industry I've found has its own internal uh, jargon shorthand, mechanics, uh, computer programmers. They each have their own industry jargon. And unless I'm specifically looking for something that goes in depth on something, where it's designed for professionals in the field. If it's just for your average Joe, please do not use any industry jargon that you don't have to for whatever you're trying to sell. For example, if you sell HVAC systems, a lot of people who aren't HVAC technicians are not gonna understand wiring charts and things of that nature unless they're an electrician in a related field to HVAC technicians. And so that's not information the average consumer is going to want to see on a website if they're looking to buy a, an HVAC system. They're just going to want to know a couple of core things. They're going to want to know how much does it cost? How much is the maintenance going to cost over the life of the unit? And what size is it? Will it be compatible with the house that they have or the apartment that they are renting to somebody else? Will it run for that unit? appropriately. They're not going to be interested in wiring charts or stuff like that with regard to programming things and other stuff like that unless they themselves are someone who's trying to source parts for something that they do repair work on the side. Right, I, I understand. Thank you. Pharmacy. Thank you for that. So they don't want to know the exact technical details of how the sausage is made, just the fact that you know how to install it and that it will be specific to your home. Yeah. or to whatever service you're looking for. Such as car or form repair. The average yeah. consumer doesn't really care how it's done as long as it just works. Right, that's correct. I agree with you. I believe that uh, Jackson is spot on with his analysis on all accounts, whether it's security or website appearance. So for example, when looking up a web design agency, I would look for skillfully crafted, unique, distinctive banners, well-placed and visually pleasing graphic design, and illustration that shows the developer's skill and style. Most of all, I think user-friendly navigation for the lay eye is very important. I think if these categories are present, I would most likely continue browsing. Those are two of my three seconds, I would say, that would make me continue browsing. And then a, a website, when you first open it, you know, you haven't read anything yet. So the content that you see is the visual, a visible awe factor, something sleek and unique. What that awe factor is, is different for every customer. How a business looks is a direct reflection on the type of audience or customer the business owner wants to attract with his website. You know how they say pictures speak a thousand words? It is very true. 
and different audiences prefer to view different entertainment sources. If you can have a website that attracts a multiple demographic of audiences, very diverse from teenage to 100 years old to, to senior, and then in every socioeconomic demographics, then I think you've mastered a web presence on content. I would definitely agree with you on that, Sarah. That is spot on. That is a spot on explanation of how content should be done. It's important to tailor your content according to who your audience is. And first thing, that anybody does when they start a business is that they do their market research so they can determine who their customers are. It's important to remember that every business owner needs to forget the big lie that many of them tend to believe when they start out and that's that everyone is your audience. That is the biggest lie in the marketing world and you need to understand that you have a specific customer to target. Everybody is not your customer. Yes, you're absolutely right. A good content writer or coach can cut you through, can help you cut through the fluff and give you a clear vision of what customer you want to attract. And yes, not everyone is your customer. So Christian, I absolutely agree with you. That's the first thing that they teach everybody who goes to marketing school or business school. That's the first thing they're going to tell you on day one because they want you to lose that mindset right away. Sarah, what you just told us leads us into our next topic. My next question for you, Justin, as a consumer is, what things do you like to see on a website in terms of its textual content? This would be your headlines, your titles, just anything related to the writing or the body copy that you see on a website. What types of textual content draw you in when you pull a website up? Personally, I like if you are gonna have paragraphs of text, then do not use a whole lot of fancy colors and use a text font that's easy on the eyes and loads relatively easily. You're not going to want to use like green and pink, very colors with mixed with black and green and yellow, unless you have a very specific audience that likes to see that. Most of the time, black on white or white on black is good enough for most websites on text. Also, another key factor for me, especially lately, has been that the website needs to be mobile friendly. I don't do as much website surfing on my laptop or desktop as I do on my mobile phone. And sometimes there's an entire week or two, sometimes weeks go by between times when I use my computer. So mobile friendliness for websites is becoming an increasingly important factor among all the big search engines. One of the things that when it comes to the text, either white on black or black on white is good enough for most websites fancy colors are just a turn off unless you are doing something specific with text that's not your standard black and you want to use a low transfer rate with regards to the text to make sure that it doesn't load too slow on the consumer's computer and you've got to also at least in my case use a font that's easy on the eyes because people don't like to look at fonts that are going to give them a migraine. Yes, those are all great pro tips. And when you pull up a website, in terms of the headlines and titles, what do you specifically look for that draws you in? What do you like to see in terms of headlines and titles and body copy? Are you looking for certain words or do you allow the headline to serve as a hook because it had something written in it that grabbed your attention? What types of things along those lines do you look for and do you like to see? Well, more than likely, if I've clicked on your website from the search results, it's because the short blurb about it had something related to whatever it is I'm looking up in search results, and I clicked on the site for further information about whatever it is I was looking for. And so the headline would be part of the... Usually, I've noticed that with the search results, the headline on the page served as part of the results in the search that I was making in the search engine to find the site. And so that often for me serves as a hook for deeper information to go to the website to take a deeper look at whatever the for related materials to whatever I was 
looking up at the time. And normally you don't need to use a lot of fancy colors or other things like that on your website. And especially stay away from multicolored fonts unless you're targeting people that prefer multicolored fonts because the average consumer's not going to want to look at multicolored fonts because it can give them a migraine. And in terms of headlines and title content within the body copy, what do you specifically look for in terms of text content that grabs your attention? Is it certain power words or certain phrases? What types of words or textual content in general grab your attention? It's got to be related to whatever I was looking. So if I'm looking up medical information, it's got to have information or medical terms located somewhere in the body that made the website noticed and indexed for that particular type of search in the search engine that looked it up. Regardless of which search engine I used to get there, whatever I'm looking up, the website I go to, I'm going to want them to have wording in their paragraphs and text that are related to the search terms I used in the search engine to find the site I go to. Yes, that's very important. A general SEO strategy involves coming up with a target phrase or target keyword, and that is the phrase that most people are going to be searching for when they do a search. So it is important to have it prevalent in your text content. And there are ways, there are methods to do keyword research using free tools such as WordStream and Word Tracker are a great way to look up which key phrases are popular as well as alternative key phrases that are related that you can use. Justin, again, once again, I very much agree with you that once a customer is impressed by the web design, then the appearance of the written content is equally important. So the textual presence, the font size, the choice of font, you know, whether it's a script or uh, whether it's a clear font that is easy to read, the font color that is that highlights the written word and then also the entire appearance should complement the website theme and be proportionate with the web design well balanced with the graphics and the illustrations so that neither overpowers they should work together well not overpower and certainly not cause people headaches so yes you're right on target here again and then I also agree that a headline, tagline, a title of the company, we want to remember that we only have a very narrow window of three to five seconds, a window of opportunity to get our message across. So the headline should be brief, concise, with the description of the business services offered. And Again, Justin, that is exactly what you said, and I agree with that. Christian, you also mentioned that the keywords, because people search the website according to certain keywords. And so, like you mentioned, the WordStream and other platforms are available for people to research that so that their headlines and titles will attract the appropriate client. Having a web designer and a content writer that understand the SEO importance of your website being found and understanding that a concise headline is very important because you have a very narrow window of opportunity. So those are those are the items I wanted to address. And I think that Justin and Christian, you guys are right on target. It's important to remember that on any website, the visual elements of a website should aid in delivery of message. It should not distract from it. And there should always be a good balance of graphics, text, and photos. It should never have endless amounts of paragraph on a homepage. The only time that that is acceptable is if you're writing a blog post or you have a page that's explaining something that requires that, but that is never a good idea for the homepage. That is a huge turnoff right there. This leads me into my next question, which is what keeps you drawn to a website once you're on it? So Justin, answering from the consumer standpoint, once you're on a website, what keeps you there? You've already decided that you like the website. It's clean looking. It looks like it has the information you need, but in general, what keeps you on the website rather than then clicking the back button to look for another one. The information on it, as long as the information I'm looking for is properly laid out in a 
proper balance between graphics and text as long as it contains the information that I need and the information on it is accurate, that's what I'm looking for. The more accurate the information, the more likely I am to stay on that website until I've either done what I need to do there or that I'll stick around until I've completed what I need that website to do for me instead of go to one of that website's competitors. It's important to make sure that specifically the information that you're specifically seeking is available. And in terms of designing a website, it's always important to make sure that you have the information that your visitor or your customer is most likely looking for up front, above the fold, before you scroll down. In terms of being customer-centric, you'll want to have something above the fold that shows exactly what the customer is looking for. So for example, let's say you're running a roofing company then you're going to want your call to action at the top to prompt the user to get a quote because that's most likely what they're looking for they're going to want to get a quote that's why they pulled up your site they're trying to contact you they want to send you a message so that's an example it's important to be customer centric to have the information that you know that your customer is most likely looking for right there when they load up the website so they don't have to dig through endless pages trying to find a specific piece of information that they're looking for i agree and one of the key factors that can help you decide that is to put in a small section near the top is a small section listing what your regular operating hours are for your business and a small section on the side of the main body to list when you're open if you have a retail location that they can go to if they're going to pick up from your physical storefront local they're going to need to know when they can show up to pick up whatever it is they're looking for. I wholeheartedly agree. It's important to have your location prevalent somewhere, either at the top or if you have multiple locations, have them in the footer at the bottom. In fact, I'm currently working on a website right now for an optometrist who is utilizing this exact method. What draws me in to a website, I agree with Justin, is that it has to deliver the services and products that it advertises and it has to be accurate. It should be captivating. It, it should have continued to interest a client. And part of that is that it is easy to read, best in small portions, like you mentioned, Christian, not just an overwhelming amount of information and clutter that you have to read through just to get to the services or product description portion of it that you need as a lay and as a client that just requires that service not to have too much information. And then it is absolutely true that less is more when it comes to content. So compelling, concise, my words are elegant, sleek, chic, unique, easy on the eye and understandable to where anyone that clicks on it is able to understand it. No big words, no technical words, something that can speak to the consumer. So a website is always built and written and the content is written for the consumer, not for the business owner. Yes, that's correct. It's important to remember that when you're putting a website together, you're writing the content, you have to keep your potential customer in mind. You have to be in their shoes when you're in the process of building the website, when you're in the process of writing content to tailor towards them. I have seen it in the past where sometimes people forget that they're designing for their customer and not for themselves. You have to drop that mindset right away because it's all about what the client is paying for. You have to make sure that your content is tailored specifically to who you're targeting. And in the case of a small business, it's important to be customer centric. Make sure that everything that they need is right there up front without having to dig through endless pages. If you have one location, have it in a small section at the top, like Justin said. If you have more than one location, you can list them in the footer at the bottom. But if you have multiple locations, too many to list, then you need to set up a locations page. It's just important to be straightforward. Make sure that people can pull up your website easily. It should never be about jumping through hoops. You should always be upfront and have the most important information that your customer is most likely going to look for above the fold. If you can put it on the home page where it's not too intrusive, that's great. 
Now, my next question is, what types of content do you look for and like to see? So, Justin, you've explained to me that you like to make sure that information in general is easy to find and that it's accurate. But when you're looking for said information, what specific types of content surrounding this information are you looking for? Are you looking for written articles or videos, blog posts? What specifically are you looking for when you're looking for information? Especially when it comes to uh, cooking, I prefer to watch videos so that I can see how it's done to watch the steps in action and I also like a mix of text so that I can read along while following along with the video if I'm trying to uh, make it myself or sometimes I'll just watch stuff for entertainment on a streaming platform I myself am not really big on uh, TV so I can browse the internet I prefer to watch my content on my computer or my phone. How-to videos are great. How-to audiobooks are really good. I like podcasts. Streaming audio is really nice. I'm not really picky about most content, but it's something that it depends on what I'm specifically looking for at the time. I'm looking for information on something. I'm looking for something on how to do a home repair project for a homeowner or something along the lines of uh, how to make a chicken franchise or something of that nature. Things that I'm not familiar with that I may not have to do but need a refresher on, usually. So basically it really depends on what type of information you're looking for. That'll determine what medium you want the information presented in. I agree with you. When it comes to cooking, for example, you can follow along very easily. And having text instructions following the video also helps, just in case. It serves as a good alternative for people who prefer to read rather than watch the video. Myself being one of said people. I prefer to read step-by-step -step instructions, but sometimes a video does help because that way you can make sure that you're following along properly by having a visual aid. Reading the instructions doesn't always have that benefit. If you can see what the example you're following is doing, then you'll have a better idea if you're doing something right or not. Each type of content has its own benefit. Videos, podcasts, audiobooks. The best thing about this type of content is that you can take it anywhere with you. You can have it in your pocket from your phone. You could pull it up on your TV. You can even listen to it through your car radio. You can have it with you while you're jogging. It's portable content. You can take it with you anywhere. Whereas with blog posts and infographics and things of that nature, yes, you can still take it with you anywhere, but it's not listenable content or interactive content. It's more about just looking at it and letting the information soak into your brain. You know, your brain absorbing the information. I see exactly what you mean, Justin. And uh, Sarah, could you please tell me what types of content you personally like to look at as a content writer? Absolutely. Personally, as a content writer, truly for my personal, if you're asking me personally, I I'm a writer and a reader, but I do equally like to, dependent upon what type of service I require. If it's cooking, I agree with Justin. And, and then, of course, also people prefer the method of learning that their brain is receptive to. And so the methods of learning are visual, auditory, read-write, and kinesthetic. Visual, we all know. Visual is the website. And if we're building websites, you know, then, then that's what we want to do. If we, if auditory, if we like to hear these things, whether it's books on audio, whether it's cooking instructions, whether it's, you know, YouTube, and Kindle and these type of things would be best for auditory audience and learners. And depending upon what type of services you're looking for, that would be something you want to look into. If we're staying with websites, if the subject is website, then I would say the visual, the written content, and do-it-yourself instructions, if that's part of the content, then yes, absolutely. Videos should be there, like the cooking video, like a workshop video, or a step-by-step -step written technical content on how to put together whatever item you're purchasing, some type of instruction booklet, whatever your, your product description may be. But keeping in mind the four methods of learning and the four methods that certain audiences are attracted to, visual, auditory, read, write, and kinesthetic, which is the doing aspect. And then marrying that with the services 
your client provides to ensure that you're reaching the audience the perfect target audience of the business. Very well said. It really just depends on your style of learning. Yes, for me personally, I am a hands-on learner. So if I was to learn something related to cooking, I would want to actually follow along with the recipe by watching the video to see if I'm doing it right. To me, that's the easiest way to learn. It's real world learning, in my opinion, to do hands-on learning. When I was in school, I learned because a lot of my classes were hands-on classes. Think of it this way. Are you going to learn how to build a website in WordPress or edit a photo in Adobe Photoshop by reading about it in a textbook? Or are you going to learn by actually doing the work that these tasks require? Think about that question, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You got it. Justin, if I may ask, what is your method of learning? How do you like to learn when it comes to trying something new or if you're following along based on something that you're looking at online? I usually need to follow along with the instructions. I remember one time I was on a popular streaming platform on my phone because I needed to look up instructions on how to jumpstart a family member's car using my car and my jumper cables. That's something I didn't know how to do. So I had to look it up and I actually had to watch how to set it up so that the batteries wouldn't short circuit and fry the electrical systems in both cars. In a specific scenario like that, it's very important to make sure that you have an accurate set of directions that you can follow and that you won't mess up because there really is no room for error when you're trying to perform a task that could possibly damage one of your cars. So yeah, I, I see what you mean, Justin. I would never want to try something like that just by reading about it in a book. I would need to physically see how to do it with my own eyes, whether it be with pictures or with video. Otherwise, I could end up making a very costly mistake and I'd probably end up needing a new car, right? <laughs> <laughs> and last time I checked, cars have never really been that affordable. Unfortunately, far too many common household items are getting far more expensive than they maybe should be. That's sad but true, yes. Now, as we get ready to close out the show, I have one final question, and that would be, what makes you want to share a website with others? So, Justin, let me ask you this. If you found a website, it's answering all your questions, you're getting everything you need from it, the content, the substance of the content. What other things in general about a website makes you want to share it with other people? You loved it so much that you had to show it to somebody else or several others one of them is simply that it solved whatever problem i needed it to solve and it did it without causing other problems that i would need to end up solving elsewhere later because you don't want to solve one problem and have 15 new ones because the first problem was solved. Yes, that's true. And the best way to achieve that is to be straightforward. And again, just like what you said earlier, it's important to avoid using the industry jargon because that will throw off a lot of the average users who are just trying to pull up this website because they want to find the specific information they need. It's important to remember that you might know the industry jargon based on being the business owner, but your customer doesn't know it. They're just coming to you because they need help. It's important to be straightforward. Present the content in a manner that answers the question easily, right? Exactly. And I mean, Unless you are someone's tech support and they're asking you to explain something and you don't have a way to break technical jargon down, then maybe it's okay to use that if you're talking to a professional who's fixing someone else's computer. But that's not the typical scenario that most websites are going to run into. That's true because they're all different. Basically, when you find a website that has a nice design, attractive to the eye, and answers your questions and you're able to find what you need without having to jump through a ton of hoops, that's a website worth sharing with other people. Precisely. And Sarah, could I please ask you the same question? When you come across a website that you like, what makes you want to share it with other people? I would agree that it has to be a website that is a benefit to others that is industry specific to the business services and products it offers. And with industry specific, I mean also content that is easy to read, easy to understand. And then of course, time is an asset that we don't want to give away. I would like to share a website 
that cuts through the fluff, cuts through the noise, cuts through the clutter, and sends a captivating, clear, and concise message that is easy on the eye, beautiful to look at, with great tips, with the appropriate either video, visual, or auditory benefits, and it solves the problem of the services that I require or that my customers need. Yes, those are all very important points about ensuring that a website truly is shining amongst a very cutthroat world. You don't want your website to lack in these areas because people will just go somewhere else if they don't like what they're seeing. And if they don't like what they're seeing, Obviously, they're not going to share it with anybody. I can't stress this enough that it is important to have a design that aids in delivering the message. It should never distract. If you're using content that is supposed to go together, maybe as you scroll through, you're noticing that one section connects to another. That's a good way to keep people interested because if it compels them to keep scrolling, because as they keep scrolling, more information is showing up and their question is getting answered along the way, then your website's doing a good job. Some websites, I think, go a little overboard in terms of what they put on the homepage, but if you're able to present that information in a method that keeps them interested, they're gonna stay on there, and then, of course, they're gonna tell a friend about it, and then they're gonna check it out, too. It's important to have a clean homepage where everything's straightforward, there is no fluff, only put on there what you know your customers are looking for. If you're a service-based business, for example, list a few of your services on there. You don't have to list them all if you have several, but at least list your most popular services on the homepage so that people can know that you offer them. Because if they can't find that, they're not gonna click on the about page or even the services page. They're gonna check out your homepage first, and if they don't like what they see on the homepage, they're gonna click the back button. They're not gonna bother clicking on any of the other pages you have within your website. So the home page has to give a good first impression and present some of the most important key points that you do not want your customer to miss. If you can keep them above the fold, that's even better. Whatever your most important information is, keep above the fold. The above the fold area is like a billboard. It's where you present your most important topic. So you don't want to squander that opportunity. Or again, you only have three seconds. I would say three seconds tops. It used to be about three to five seconds, but things are changing. And really, you only have three seconds at this point. If you're visitor is spending those three seconds either waiting for your website to load or they're looking at the above the fold area and they have no idea what they're looking at they're not going to check out the rest of your website they are going to hit the back button they're going to pick one of your competitors and they will never return to your website so it's important to remember keep your home page straightforward most important information above the fold and keep what you know that your customers are most likely looking for up front on the home page with a clean design that does not distract, but instead aids in delivery of the overall message you're trying to convey. Absolutely. And what is shareable? I wanted to just go back and say, Justin uh, said it very well. Relatable is shareable. If I can relate to it, the group of friends and family that I associate with can relate to it, most likely I will share it. Right. And that's not just with websites. That's with anything you find, any types of content that you find online. Maybe you found a product for sale or you found a video or even a podcast episode. If it's relatable, then it becomes shareable with others that you know could also relate and benefit from it as well. Agreed. I'd like to thank you both for joining me on CDG BizCast today. This episode had a lot of great information that I hope other business owners will benefit from. Justin, you've shared a lot of great information as a consumer for what business owners should keep in mind. Sarah, you have also shared a lot of great information as a content writing professional that business owners should keep in mind as well in terms of in keeping their websites attractive to the public. And I thank you both for sharing such wonderful tidbits of information. This was a great episode, and I thank you once again for being on the show.